Good afternoon. It's really great to be able to bring up the issue of quantum computing, quantum supremacy at this Sberbank conference, particularly ahead of New Year. Definitely, new technology-related challenges that are being debated around the world that will help to model and create new materials, model biological molecules, for example, the nitrogenase, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria and others require enormous computational capacity. Machine learning, AI, big data are exactly the areas where quantum computing can come into play. That's a hot topic around the world right now. Obviously, each of us is observing the uh, implementation of Moore's law. Moore was one of the founders of Intel, and according to this law, the number of transistors doubles every 24 months, every two years. So, in line with this law, the size of the transistor this year is supposed to be the size of an atom. Well, in Russia, our microchip technology is at the level of 65 nanometers, which is just one or two times greater than the size of an atom. So the fast growth of other parameters will help us to advance these uh, technology, like, the, I mean, the clock rate, etc. And we've now actually reached the limit of the classic technology and we're now seeing a need for a new system that will use different laws of physics that will help us to overcome these restrictions related to the traditional lithography process. And in this regard, the quantum technology is one of the most advanced, one of the most exciting technology to address these areas. And it's not, it's not the first quantum revolution that we are facing, despite the hype around quantum that we're seeing today, this is actually the second quantum revolution. We witnessed the first quantum revolution when the laser was invented and the Soviet Union got the Nobel Award for it. And the first quantum achievements were related to the management of collective quantum properties. So the second quantum revolution is all about the management of individual quantum properties, like managing individual atoms or individual photons, which would open up new opportunities in using computational devices. Now, based on such a system, a quantum computer is a totally new type of a computational device that uses quantum physics laws and can help to model and can upgrade its capacity by several times. The key idea behind a quantum computer is and the so-called qubit. It's a special quantum device. Unlike a classic computer where you have only two states, up and down, or yes or no, qubit represents the so-called superposition of states. All of these states are there at the same time. And thanks to it, we can dramatically increase its computational capacity. And there are related technologies like quantum cryptography that would 
Guarantee the security of uh, your message. You would know in advance whether there was any meddling into the transmission from point A to point B, because any meddling changes the state and we would definitely know whether the message received was tampered with or not. The past several years have seen a boom of investment into quantum technology around the world. Many countries have adopted state programs. Take the US. They will spend about 20 billion US dollars on quantum computing. China will spend 10 billion. The EU will spend around 3 billion. As for Russia, the Russian government adopted a roadmap with a budget of about 24 billion Russian rubles. So what is quantum supremacy? It is an ability for quantum computer to resolve a task within reasonable time that it cannot be resolved by a classic computer in principle. And for example, if you increase the number of particles or variables, it would dramatically increase uh, the number of equations. So we really need to look at how much faster a quantum computer can resolve the tasks than the classic computer. For some tasks, as those related to AI and modeling of new materials, we could have exponential relationships in terms of hardware. Just like in classic computing, you can use the following metaphor. The power of a quantum computer depends on the number of qubits. Google made a big splash recently. Last year it uh, demonstrated calculations using the 53 qubit processor. Initially they stated they have the 72 qubit processor, but they made guaranteed calculations based on the 53 qubit processor. According to it, they modeled random quantum chains and the computer resolved that issue in 200 seconds, while an expected time for a classic computer would be dozens of thousands of years. So this is a visualization of what is, of what quantum supremacy is. If we can live for a long time, we can wait for 10,000 years, wait until this task is resolved, but actually quantum computer can do it in several minutes. Now let's look at the roadmap in Russia. It has been adopted in 2020, it will engage both the academia and private companies. Definitely, our goal is to have 100 qubit computer by 2024 and to cut the lag to two to three years from other major producers. We're actually uniquely positioned right now we entered the quantum race almost at the same time as big companies with a lag of two or three years. So we actually started it seven years ago. Quantum technology in Russia really took off seven to ten years ago. The first team that focused heavily on quantum qubits was led by Professor Alexei Ustinov. He won a mega grant from the Russian government to set up a laboratory here at Moscow Institute of Steel and Alloys. And in the laboratory was set up in 2012 and in July 2013, they measured the spectrum of the first qubit in Russia 
Then, together with the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology and the Institute for Solid State Physics, they manufactured the first qubit in Russia. The infrastructure of quantum computing has evolved since then. It's been really developing good. So, one of the major components is the dry dilution refrigerator. It costs about 300,000 US dollars. There are about 500 around the world. We have three, several at uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology and the Russian Quantum Center and the Russian Institute for Solid State uh, Physics have uh, won each. So we do have this infrastructure being set up and we really hope that the roadmap will be completed. The Lehman project was the first harbinger. It uh, was uh, set up in 2016-2019 by the government, by the Foundation for Advanced Research Projects. It really pushed for uh, quantum projects to be developed. Rosatom invested heavily into the prototype of a quantum computer and the Sleeman project helped us to learn how to mass produce uh, superconducting qubits. We also learned how to control and measure the states of qubits and Moscow State uh, Institute of uh, Steel and Alloys uh, built the first prototype of a quantum computer on two qubits uh, and we use the Grav research uh, algorithm to test it. So, as you can see, we look into the future positively. We really hope that the challenges that we are facing today in terms of the use of AI, machine learning, modeling new materials will be addressed successfully by quantum technology. Quantum is the future, it's an exciting and bright future, I welcome you all to a new quantum world. Thank you.